All right, this is uh, Jim Quick. I'm your host and also your guest for the Superhero U Brain Power for Success Summit. I'm honored to be able to, to share this time with you. And uh, so I want this to be a good coaching session with you. If we have, and I know we have tens of thousands of people that signed up for the summit all around the, the world, um, I want you to feel like this is you and I having a conversation. Because if you've seen my work, you've probably seen me um, some videos or um, maybe have been in participants in our classes and our in our speed reading or memory programs, been in an audience, and you've seen me do demonstrations on stage where I'll memorize a room full of people's names or they'll pass around a microphone and each give me a different word or a different number and such. And I always tell people, I don't do this to impress you. I really do this to express to you what's possible. And um, because once upon a time, I couldn't do this. And in fact, when I first got started, on this journey, contrary to what a lot of people think, I had my learning challenges. You know, I had a very bad head injury when I was five years old. You know, I could never read a, read anything well. Um, I could have trouble focusing all the time, and I always thought I was broken and uh, and that uh, something was wrong with me. And what I realized is that there's no such thing as a good or bad memory. There's just a trained memory and an untrained memory. And um, and so this this session that we're here together today. For the next 60 minutes or so, I just want to help train your brain and give you some new reference points. This is not a magic pill, but it is a magic process. And if you've, um, you know, purchased some of the replays and got our Quick Learning A to Z program, you know what I'm about to talk about, which is that what you put in is what you get out. All right, that your mind is like a muscle, or your brain is like a muscle. It's not, but it, it acts metaphorically like that that it grows stronger with use, all right? And you've learned from our previous, you know, some of our doctor friends who have been on these calls, whether it's Dr. Ned Holloway or Dr. Rudy Tanzi, um, or whether it's Michael Gelb, that by strengthening and doing these exercises of the mind, you make new, new connections, right? This neuroplasticity, which is learning. And that's what today's all about. Because I'm gonna test you also with your memory. I'm gonna give you a list of words on this session, and I'm gonna ask you how many you remembered. And I'd like you to to share, you know, how you're able to do, how many of the, of the words you're able to remember. And then I'm going to show you a couple of techniques on how to remember more of those words, for example. You know, 60 minutes is a lot, especially when we're talking about accelerated learning. If you could walk away with anything, you know, and say, wow, that was, you know, a good 60 minutes, very well spent, you know, in what ways would you like to remember better? Right. Because it's not like all the times people say, I want a better memory. But it's kind of like saying, oh, I want to be better at sports. Well, what sport specifically would you like to be better at? And then there's all these different great techniques or skills in order to be able to, to do that and to get better in those kind of areas. What I want to do is I want to go over a couple of ground rules. I want you to, and by the way, if you haven't already watched my replay, um, before this summit um, started, I did a live stream nine, about 80 or 90 minutes of prep on how to get the most out of this series. And a, a good part of it had to do with note taking, how to take notes, and also how to remember. And if you've gone through it, if you click on the replay tab, you could watch that full um, video stream. And in there, I teach you an ancient memory technique, kind of a lost art of memory, to be able to memorize a speech without notes. And that technique, that location method, is very powerful. And I know I've gotten a lot of emails and different posts about people who've applied it to memorize some of the highlights of uh, some of these calls. So I would recommend you do that. You could also, another resource that's absolutely free is SuperheroU.com, SuperheroYOU.com. It's a, it's a site that we created for you to be able to be a bridge to get you from where you are to where you want to go um, mentally. And um, many of you know we host an annual brain power conference where we bring in some of the top minds in the world, the Justice League of Geniuses, if you will, just like what we have done with this online summit. And uh, we put some really exclusive private video footage from that event right on that site. So if you'd like to watch um, some of that you know, in comments, please do. And then the last resource also is the bookstore. So if you'd like, you could go to superherou.com forward slash bookstore and get any of the books that um, any of these great experts have. So those are just three really good resources. All right, so let's, um, let's sit up and be in the absolute perfect kind of learning state. Be in the state that you want to be in 
we're going to have Mary Lou Henner talking about how to remember things in your past. Um, she remembers her personal history extremely well. She uh, has a great book on it about um, total memory makeover. She's one of 12 people in the world that have highly superior autobiographical memory, and, um, and she's in the series. Let's give you a really quick overview of names. And I have a video on uh, Superhero U. It was one of your free gifts also. But I, I could go through it a little bit just as a brief overview for those of you because I think review is extremely important for what we're talking about. Okay, so how to remember names. Now, how important is it to remember someone's name? <laughs> is it a little bit or a lot, right? The name is like the sweetest sound to a person's ear. Say you're an entrepreneur. I don't know how many entrepreneurs are listening to this or, or you're, you have a relationship with a human being, but uh, it's really important to show somebody that you care, and it's really hard to show somebody you're going to care for their business or their future or their family or their health or whatever it is that you want to sell them if you don't care enough just to remember their name, right? Like, if, have you ever been talking to somebody and then seconds later they give you their name and it just disappears, or you're talking to somebody and whose name you really should know and for the life of you, you don't remember what their name is. And what makes it worse is when that person has the nerve to remember your name. <laughs> or you're talking to somebody and whose name you should know, and then somebody who you do know comes up, and you're in a position where you have to introduce those two people. So memory names is very important. So let me give you a, a few really quick tips, all right? Um, the first thing I always tell people is remember M-O-M, -M, remember mom. And um, and the reason why, it's, it's an acronym, obviously, but these are the three keys for a better memory. If you're ever forgetting something, usually one of these three things is not there. The first M stands for, and actually, let me ask you a question. Let's say you're, you're really bad with names, but let's say somebody you know has a suitcase of $100,000 cash. Uh, or whatever the equivalent is for, um, you know, for your, for your country, that, that currency. Only if you just remember their name. How many people are likely to remember that person's name, right? A lot. And you didn't use a technique. What happened is you were just motivated. So the first M in mom stands for motivation. You always want to do a motivation check with yourself. Like on a scale of one to 10, how badly do you want to, or how greatly do you want to remember that person's name? or remember where you put the keys, or remember what you're studying. Because motivation, what is your motive for action? Remember that everyone's you know, always tuned in to their favorite radio station. It's WIIFM, WIIFM. We get it here in New York, you get it in, in Rockland, and you get it in Ontario, Canada. You know, um, you get it in Australian capital. Like, you know, everybody gets it everywhere. It's what's in it for me. All right. So you want to tune in to what's in it for you. So relative to names, ask yourself, why do I want to remember the person's name? Because if you can't come up with one reason, what's likely to happen? You're probably not going to remember it because we write this down or tweet it out. Reasons precede results. Reasons precede results. Reasons come first and then results come second. Right. I always tell people that I think that the success formula that I'm always attuned to is what I call H cubed, H cubed. It goes from your head to your heart to your hands. You know, you could sit in a room and keep things in your head, affirm things, think things, um, visualize things. But if it just stays in your head and it doesn't get to your hands, which means action, then what's usually missing is the second H, which is your heart. You know, the emotion, the energy of motion, and because that's the fuel, right? That fuels the car and the, and the action. So I always want to plug into that, that emotion. So ask yourself, why do I want to remember this? And let's say it's a four, then I would ask myself, what do I need to think or believe or do to make it a six or a seven or an eight? or a 10. Even handling procrastination, you can do the same thing. You know, like we have a speed reading program that we teach, and it requires 20 minutes of practice each day for 30 days to be able to change that habit. But some people procrastinate, and they don't get the kind of results. And people will say, well, on a scale of 1 to 10, you know, how, how much do you, how motivated are you to do this? And they'll say, well, it's really only a 4. Well, what would you need to do in your mind to make it a 6 or a 7? Well, I just have to think about like how good it would feel to be able to get done with my studies. I would have to think about how good it would be to be able to read, you know, two books on health a week. You know, I would need to be able to, to, to be able to think about how great my XYZ, right? So motivation. The O in mom 
stands for observation. Observation. And this is critical, again, for remembering what you read, for remembering, um, like facts. You know, like we do programs where we teach people, like, how to remember the, the 50 capitals for the, the states or, or all the presidents, you know, and by number and the, the chemical elements and everything else like that. Um, but we're able to do it because we teach people their motivation. We teach them their observation. The observation is important because a lot of people blame their retention when they can't remember something when it really is a matter of attention, attention. And so observation. So, for example, if you imagine a circle or draw a circle on your notepad and I ask you to draw the back of a dime or, you know, whatever currency, um, you know, for for where you live, what does that look like? You know, do you really know what do you know what the back of a dime actually looks like? Or, for example, if you use Google, which a lot of us use Google. Right. And um, can you tell me what colors those letters are? The G, the O, the O, the G, the L and the E. What color is that first G? What color is the is the O? What color is the second O? What's the, what color is the second G, the L and the E? Without cheating, obviously, right? <laughs> and so that's an observation and that's a skill that can be trained. And so just like, you know, remembering something, you can't, you know, there's a difference between looking at something and really seeing it. And just as there's a difference between looking at something and seeing it, there's a big difference between hearing something and really listening to it. So a lot of people are, for example, forgetting a name, but they're not forgetting their name. They're just not even paying attention to begin with. And the best thing I can recommend that you do is be, you know, as our friend you know, Eckhart Tolle talks about, not my friend, but just all of our friends, you know, in the power of now, be present, right? Be present. Because you know what people are normally doing when they're studying or normally doing when they're trying to remember a name? They have this inner conversation going on inside their head, this inner voice, and that inner voice is what's keeping you from remembering. Because if you're meeting someone fresh for the first time and you are talking to yourself, like, how do I know this person? What should I say? And dot, 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 dot. Then there's two conversations going on at once. There's one with you and that person. And then there's one with you and you. And which one do you think you're going to pay more attention to? You and a stranger or you and yourself? And so... Really, it's it's you, you know, you're going to pay attention more to you and yourself and you're not going to be going to hear the name. So you want to observe and pay attention. By the way, that self-talk is the one of the big obstacles to people's reading speed. You know, we do like one of the most involved like like speed reading programs out there. And if it's not just speed, it's also focus and comprehension because it doesn't make sense to read something if you don't remember what you read. Right. And that's why we do so much memory training. But one of the big obstacles, because somebody asked about that on the Facebook page that keeps you from reading slowly is what I call it's what's called sub vocalization, sub vocalization. And what that means is sub meaning under vocal meaning speech, that's your inner speech. Have you ever noticed when you read something, you hear that inner voice inside reading alongside with, uh, you know, reading along with you, you hear that voice? Hopefully it's your own voice, like it's not like somebody else's voice, you don't hear like two or three voices. The reason why it's a challenge is if you have to say every single word to yourself, you could only read as fast as you could speak. That means your reading speed is limited to your talking speed and not your real thinking speed. Get that? So if you're saying the words, you can only read as fast as you could talk as opposed to how fast you could really think. Like, but you don't have to see a stop sign and say stop, right? You know what that word means. And 95% of all words, you know, by sight, you don't have to take your time to pronounce it. Anyway, that inner talk is what gets in the way of your memory a lot also because it distracts you. I would recommend that everybody literally what they do is they just listen. If you spell out the word listen, by the way, and then you change the words the letters around a little bit what is it also spelled the letters that make up the word listen look at it for a second silent right it's also spelled silent and that's the best thing you can do to be able to observe and then finally the m the second m in mom stands for mechanics and the mechanic is not the person that fixes your car but the technique the strategy the skill the tip the idea that you apply to have a better memory and that's what quick recall and all the memory training that we do is based on but if you don't have the motivation to want to remember something and you don't pay attention you know the tips are probably going to not going to help a whole lot all right but let me give you one right now i want you to remember be suave all right be suave and i'm going to go through this this one really really quick 
All right, so next time you're at a business function, you're at a wedding, you're around you know, a social event, and you're checking the mirror for your tie or your makeup, I also want you to do a self-check with yourself and, I'm, and say to yourself, I'm going to be suave, B-E-S-U-A-V-E, be suave. And the first B in be suave, the, the B in be suave stands for believe. If you believe or don't believe, either way, you're right, right? And so if you believe you can, believe you can, either way, you're right. Henry Ford said that. And so you want to check your negative self-talk because a lot of people, my experience, and, you know, we do these, our programs are available, you know, people going through it from 80 different countries. And when I talk to people from all ages, all backgrounds, all careers, all levels of education, people come sometimes and they say, well, my memory is horrible. You know, I remember I was training for marathon, right, with a name like Quick, and hopefully you'll remember my name after today. The name like Quick, my life and my destiny was pretty much planned out. You know, I had to be a runner back in school. I have to be very careful when I'm driving because you don't want to get pulled over for speeding when your driver's license says quick right on it because you're not talking your way out of that ticket. And I get to teach speed reading and speed recall, speed learning. But when it comes to running, you know, I was preparing for this marathon and I was reading a book on not the physical training, but the mental training, because that's what I was really concerned about. One of the chapters opened up like this. Your brain is like a supercomputer and your self-talk is the program it will run. So if you tell yourself, I am not good with names, you will not remember the name of the next person you meet because you programmed your computer not to. And isn't that telling? That's the power of a belief, right? And so um, so you want to check negative beliefs and be able to rewrite over it and um, and replace it with something more encouraging because your mind is always eavesdropping on your self-talk. Your mind is always, always eavesdropping on your self-talk. The E in... Um, in B, suave, the first D stands for exercise. And I don't mean physical exercise, although I think three of the previous experts talked about how physically active they are, how important it is to your memory, including, uh, you know, when Michael Gelb was talking about Leonardo da Vinci and how physically fit he was, exercise, because what's good for your heart is good for your head. But I, I don't mean physical exercise in this case. I mean practice, because practice makes what? See, it, it doesn't really make um, perfect because perfect practice makes perfect. But I, I also think that perfect is so, is so unattainable because, you know, it's such a kind of a interesting standard because you can never be perfect. There's always some other place you could go. Right. And so I think pr- practice makes progress or practice makes permanent would be even more accurate. Like I could practice typing with two fingers, but I'm never going to be a, a, a perfect typer. Because the strategy I'm practicing doesn't enable for it. Just like when a lot of people read, for example, they read like with two fingers. And then, you know, I, when I was when I was growing up in school, um, you know, I remember my first typing class, and it was a typewriter, right before computers. And I'm thinking like, wow, and I was a really fast typer. And I wasn't naturally good at a lot of things, but typing um, was something I had because when I visit my grandparents and um, and they would watch me, they, they had no toys. And all they had for me to play with was this rusty, dusty typewriter. And so I would just entertain myself there. And I would I was a fast typer because I invented this two finger method where I would use my index finger and kind of hunt and peck and I would be a fast typer. Now, fast forward when school started teaching in middle school how to type. Um, they let you type and, pl- and play with it. And I was like the fastest typer. And it was really neat because on the blackboard, they would write, you know, Jim Quick, and I'd be the fastest typer words per minute, just like they do reading speed words per minute. And um, but something interesting happened. After a few days, the teacher's like, OK, I'm going to teach you how to type. And and I was like, whoa, I want to take the test now. <laughs> I could teach people how to type. And you're like, no, like she's like that. You're doing it wrong. You want to use all your fingers. And these are your home keys and such. And I tried it. And what do you think happened to my typing speed? It went so down. <laughs> uh, and um, and it was so like, it went so down. Um, it went so down my typing speed. So what do you think I go back to doing? I go back to typing with my two fingers because I know better, right? Like a lot of us do. And what happened was my friends, after a week of practicing, what do you happen to their typing speed? It went up. And what happened to my typing speed? It stayed the same. And then a week later, my friends are typing faster than me. And then after that, a lot faster than me. And I realized, and my slow brain realized that, hey, that's not fair. They're using five times more 
fingers. <laughs> like I literally have to work five times harder to get the same kind of results. I began to plant the seed as like, wow, working smarter is a whole lot better than working smarter. And I mean, working harder. And so that's um, that's the lesson there. So practice makes permanent or practice makes progress because the bad news is it takes practice to remember names. But here's the good news. It doesn't take as much as you think. If you've ever seen me perform or meet lots of people and such, remember their names. I learned that so long ago, like 20 years ago or such. And I practiced it for the first few months. But after you could do it, you don't get much better, right? It's like learning how to drive a car or learning how to ride a bike or learning how to type. Once you know how to type, you know, you have that skill. And so the good news is it doesn't take as much as you think. And practice, the question becomes, how and where can you practice? Well, I'm, I'm showing you the how in terms of what to do. That's the suave. But where you practice is wherever you meet a human being, right? And so when you're at the grocery store, I used to go into the grocery store and just make up names with people who would walk in with me. I'm like, oh, that's Mary, that's Bob, that's Sue. And then later on, when I'm leaving, I'm checking out, I see them in the aisles. I was like, oh, what's that person's name? Oh, that's Sue. Who's that? That that's That's Bob, that's Mary. And I would practice because what you practice in private you're rewarded for in public. I think Tony Robbins said that. What you practice in private, you're rewarded for in public. And that's the beautiful thing, All right? So practice, and it's worth it. Well, I mean, and I sound a little bit passionate about this because these are your memories, right? You know, without your memories, you know, when I first learned these skills, I would be fanatical about it because I would think like, why doesn't everyone want to learn this? Because this is everything. And if you're good at, for example, with your memory, like learning is remembering. And, and Jim Quick didn't say that. Socrates said that. And I was thinking like, wow. And, and then, you know, we all have people in our lives that have brain aging and dementia and Alzheimer's. And if you've ever had that experience or you have you know, a loved one going through it, it, it is tough. I used to go to senior centers and I still do to this day. And I don't teach them techniques. What I do is I just I'm there and I just I just want to help them polish up their memories to talk about their history, to share their stories, because that that's like the greatest gift. Um, anyway, the reason I'm sharing this with you, and it's not always like a strategy or a tip, there's lots of ideas out there. I think the strategy is important, but what quick learning really is, it's a combination of not just strategy, but it's also a level of attitude, a, a level of attitude of a, a incredible fascination and curiosity, you know, an excitement for learning, a childlike approach, because I, I really do believe attitude determines your altitude in life and more than even anything. And I do believe that success, 80% of it is just, it's psychology, you know, and, and that that's a big part of it. I, I think that a lot of us know things we should be doing, but we don't, we don't do it. And I think that that's, that's the gap. And that's why this superhero summit is, is meant to be full of information, but also inspiration as well. Anyway, that's the B. So the B to re re review is believe E is exercise. So let's get to the suave. This is the technique, five simple, simple steps. When you meet somebody for the first time, the S means you say it. You say their name. Somebody introduces um, you themselves to you. The first thing you do is you say, you know, Sue posts something really great. I was like, Sue, it's nice to meet you. Roxanne, have you know, it's it's a real pleasure. Jane, um, have a great day. So I say the name, right? And so that's the first thing. The E, the um, U in suave stands for use the name. I use the name. Now notice I use it in conversation. Now notice I use it, U-S-E, not abuse it, A-B-U-S-E. You know, it would be too much to go to somebody and say, let's see, um, Philip from San Francisco. Philip, it's really nice to meet you. Philip, you know, you know, what would you like to cover on this call today? Philip, well, you know, have a great day. That would be an abuse, right? So you want to use it three or four times in the context of the conversation. And the A in suave stands for ask. Remember that everyone's favorite subject is it's not golf, it's not travel, it's not shopping, it's themselves, right? And so you want to ask about a person's name. Now, what? Now this is really great when you meet somebody that has a different kind of name than you're used to, right? Because 90% of the names that you meet, I mean, you know, a Mike, a John, a Mary, a Sue, a Jim, I have a very common name myself, but every once in a while you meet somebody that has a different name that you're not used to. What can you ask about a person's name? Say it out loud and don't worry if somebody's looking at you, you're, you know, you're always on, you can be on your phone or anything else like that. Um, but, <laughs> um, you, you know, you, what can you ask? You could ask about how do you spell it? You know, where, where, where are you from? 
What the, are you, who are you named after? Are you related to this person? What does it mean? You know, I remember I was doing this, um, memory training for the country's, um, for North America's largest life insurance company. And the uh, training director's name was Nankita. And there was about a hundred people in the room at the time. Training director Nankita. And I was like, wow, that's a beautiful name. And, you know, it has to be sincere because I really, I'm fascinated with people's names. Um, and, and so I was, I was like, that's a beautiful name. How do you spell it? Where is it from? What does it mean? And then she pauses and she looks at her coworkers and she says it means graceful falling waters. I was like, wow, that's, that's pretty neat. And then, you know, some people in the audience like made some noises too. And it made me think, I was like, Nankita, how long have you worked here? She was like about four years. I was like, with a lot of these people here? She was like, yeah, I have a lot of good friends here. And I asked the audience, the, her coworkers, how many people actually knew that's what her name meant? And out of a room of 100 people, how many raised their hand? Not one. Not one person. So there's a big, big difference, you know, and then all of a sudden I created this bond, right? So you ask about a person's name, which builds like your memory of that person. And then finally, the V and the E, the V stands for visualize, visualize, meaning how many people are much better with faces than they are with names? If you're better with faces, like you go to somebody and say, hey, you know, I remember your face, but I forgot your name. It's never the opposite. You never walk up to someone and say, hey, I remember your name, but I forgot your face. You know, that that wouldn't make any sense. And so the reason why is um, we tend to remember more of what we see because more of your brain is 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 committed and responsible for visual, right? Your visual cortex. And there's a Chinese proverb, by the way, that goes, what I what I hear, I forget what I see, I remember and what I do, I understand for yourself also, because remember what you teach, you get to learn twice. What I hear, I forget what I see, I remember and what I do, I understand. And those are the different learning styles, right? You know, in terms of auditory, in terms of, in terms of visual, in terms of kinesthetic. But um, so what I'm saying here is if you tend to remember what you see, then try seeing what you really want to remember. Try seeing what you really want to remember. Meaning if somebody you meet, let's say that their name is Mike, what could you picture if you're a child to remind you that person's name is Mike? And you would say, well, I would picture them singing on a microphone. Great. And how do you take it to the next level? Imagine them jumping on a table and singing karaoke on a microphone, right? And you would remind you that that person's name is Mike. And if it makes you smile and makes you laugh, that's why you remember it. Because emotion tied to information becomes knowledge. Emotion tied to information becomes knowledge. Right. We all know where we were. Like, I'm sure that there's a certain song or a certain scent, a certain baked good, a certain cooking that takes you back years ago because that that emotion tied information helped to store it in long term. All right. So. Um, so if a per and remember, who are the fastest learners on the planet? Children. And I don't know about you, but how many people had their name made fun of? Right. You know, with a name like quick. And so. And that's how children learn. They make fun of names. That's how they learn. And so if a person's name is, is um, let's say, is David, I picture like a slingshot, you know, for David and Goliath. I just imagine just using a, a slingshot to hit their glasses, right? And, and this, by the way, this is in the privacy of your own mind. And even when it doesn't work, it still works because what it gets you to do is focus on the person and focus on the name. Right. Remember that observation that's so important. So even when it doesn't work, it's more likely to work because it gives you more things to be able to remember. So if a person's name is Carol, what could you picture? Like Christmas caroling, that would be perfect. Right. So you could picture that if a person's name, for example, is Jane, what can you picture? Exactly. If a person's name is Mary, what do you picture? Mary, right? And so imagine they're getting married or imagine they have, you know, Mary had a little lamb. Imagine meeting someone named Mary and you imagine them holding a lamb underneath their arms, right? A little bit crazy. And that's why you remember it. Person's name is John. You could picture what? <laughs> whatever, whatever it is you picture. Um, all right. So that's the V. And then the E stands for end. You leave saying goodbye, ending with their name, right? Danielle, thank you for coming. Augusto, it's been a real privilege. Kaylee, you know, have a wonderful day. Sue, you know, it's been a real pleasure. Thanks for all your wonderful posts on the comment section, right? And so you end, because if you could walk into a room and meet 20 strangers and leave saying goodbye to every single one of them, that's a, that's a superpower. 
remembering names is super bad. I, I has life. I've been talking to a lot of people in business, right? We have an opportunity to work at some of the finest organizations from Virgin to Nike to Harvard to Fox Studios, um, to Zappos. And, uh, and I could tell you remembering people's names has got to be one of the highest skills or best forms of, of business etiquette, you know, and networking certainly. So I would really get good at that. And there's so much more here also as well, you know, in the area of remembering names, but that's just one or two techniques. Now, what I would like to do is do a little bit of a, a game with you. What I like to do now is I like to give you, let's say that I was in front of the audience and I memorized um, uh, like a, a list of words, right? They passed around the mic and gave me a list of words in and out of order. And so you can see this on, um, you know, if you go to superherou.com, you can see some of my presentations where I'll memorize a list of random words out of order. So that someone will say 17 is this and 12 is this and one is that and 20 is that and so on. And I'll give it back to them and forwards and backwards. Now what I'll say now it's your turn, okay? Now I'm going to test you because I really do believe, whether it's the memory training or the speed reading training that we do, that what you measure, you can manage. And what I love about it, it's very, very measurable. You can measure someone's reading speed. You can measure, measure their comprehension. You can measure how many names that they can remember out of 20, right? You can memorize a list of words. So before we start talking about how to remember what you read, fundamentally, you need to be able to remember words because the words are like the building blocks. You know, the only other difference is for our programs, often people say, I want to be a better speller. And that's all memory, right? And I used to, I used to work with kids helping them, you know, spelling bees and be better spellers and such like that, because that, that's important also as well. Not so much with technology, but nowadays we're outsourcing everything to technology. We're outsourcing our brains to technology, right? It keeps all our phone numbers. It does math for us. It gets us from here to there. And in a lot, I was talking to one doctor, they said that smartphones are actually making you stupid. So what I want to do here is I want to challenge your brain right now. And, and I want to give you a list of words. And instead of 20 words out of order, I'm going to give you just 10 words in order. All right. And what I want you to do to the best of your ability, memorize these 10 words. Now, you're definitely capable of doing it because it's only 10 words. And just to make it a little bit harder, I won't, you know, I'll give them to you kind of like, like fast because they're only 10 words okay so get ready so put yourself in a peak state that you're about to learn something and practice put your pens down do not write this down because we're testing your memories all right ready water bottle balloon battery barrel board diamond night rider ox toothpaste sign okay now, that was 10. Do not write it down yet. Don't cheat either. Do not write it down. Now, what I'd like you to do is just take out a piece of paper, or if you're on your phone, or if you're on the computer, just write down as many of the 10 as you remember. And if you didn't understand all the words, that's okay, too. And sometimes we don't understand all the words that, um, you know, that, that we learn. All right, I'm going to go through these words again. Now I'm going to give them to you, okay? And I want you to check um, how many you remembered, okay? Water bottle, balloon, battery, barrel, board, diamond, night rider, ox, toothpaste, sign. Okay. And again, what you put in is what you get out. All right. Now, now what I'm going to do is this is a simple memory test, right? And I want you now to teach me. Now, you are the expert. You are the expert because, you know, if you got any of them right, whether it's one, two, three, four, five, your memory works, right? You just need to learn how to work your memory. So specifically what I mean is it's not magic. There's always a method behind the madness or the magic. So specifically, if you remembered some of these words, there's a reason why. There's always a reason. It's not just because, you know, what I'm trying to do with this series of, you know, this brain power series, the inspiration was I want people to go inside their mind and really admire and, and assess like how their brain works so they could work their brain. Because for a lot of people, it's this black box. Like you could see your fingers, right? And you could see your legs. You could see different parts of your body and your hair and such, but you can't see your brain. So I want to let you know that there's reasons why you remembered some of these and not all of them. The words you remember, I want you to post one word and why you think you remembered it more than others. Like there's certain principles that make 
the world in universe work, right? There's there's this phenomenon of, let's say, gravity, example, right? There, but there's also these principles of learning and principles of memory. So repetition definitely helps you retain something. Okay, let's say, okay, a lot of people remembered water bottle because it was first, okay? So water bottle because it was first. And so the so you remember things that are first. So not only does repetition help your memory, but things being first help your memory. If you go to a party, probably the first people you meet at that party, you're going to remember, right? If you give you a list of 20 words, you probably remember the words in the beginning, and that's important. You tend to remember the last one, which was sign, because that was last. So that's just kind of works hand in hand, right? Same thing, you go to the same party, you remember the people in the beginning of the party and the people that you spent the most, the last time with the party, right? Let me give you the actual um, words for this. First, there's a word called primacy, primacy. Last, it's called recency, recency, meaning primacy means you remember things in the beginning. Last or recency means you tend to remember things at the end or more recent. All right. And how that you could apply that right now to uh, a lot of your studies, like a lot of people put, um, you know, that they want to remember what they read and remember what they're studying because they're preparing for things in their career or their school is a lot of people they didn't study in school. Right. They actually crammed. Right. And I don't think I was the only one that was guilty of this, but they wouldn't study for weeks and then they would just spend five, six hours straight just studying with no break. And what that means is if you can imagine like a, a graph where it goes, starts up high on one side and then it goes down like a U and then it goes back up at the end and it ends in high, that high on the left is primacy, that high level on the right is recency, but everything in between you lose, right? Because you tend to remember things in the beginning and things at the end. Instead, what you want to do is be able to take breaks. The reason why our calls are only about 60 minutes is because if you take, let's say, six hours straight, you have that big hole in the middle that you don't remember as much. But if you imagine you take a break every hour and split up that six hours into into uh, in different breaks, like a five minute break, then you create a lot more beginnings and a lot more ends. You create a lot more firsts and a lot more lasts. You create a lot more primacy and a lot more recency. So you pick up a lot more. So instead of being one big U, then you have this divided by six, you have these small little drops, but then you get up really fast. So it goes to the low to high very more quickly. Okay, what other words did you tend to remember besides the first and the last? Toothpaste because toothpaste, it was something that was familiar. So I'd write that down. So a quality or a principle of memory is not only repetitions, not only uh, first, not only last, but familiarity. Don't you tend to remember things that are familiar to you? For example, if you don't you remember someone's name sometimes better if you have a relative or a good friend that has that same name, right? Because it's familiar to you. So that's why some people remember toothpaste. Lenora remembers because she visualized things. Yes, exactly. So maybe some of these you remember because you made a picture of it. So I would write that. You made something visual. So that's a that's a principle of recall that you tend to remember things that you see. So if you took the time, which is really a heartbeat, to be able to picture one of the words, then you're more likely to remember it because a picture is worth what? A thousand words, right? Very good. Okay, here's kind of interesting. Some people remember all the Bs because it went from balloon to battery to barrel to board. And I would say, I would call that organization, right? It's organ, there's organized, or it's like, if another word for it is chunked, like if you chunk certain things together, like if I gave you a list of 20 words and asked you how to memorize them, most people would get um, five to nine words, right? It's George Miller's study out of Harvard saying, we remember seven plus or minus two bits of information consciously. Right. So seven minus two is five. Seven plus two is nine. We can only hold five to nine bits. So it's like a phone number. Right. But anything past that is pretty much, you know, not not really unless you have a system like we're teaching you. So maybe you remember the four B's are part of those four B's because it's organized. Like if I give you a list of 20 words and ask you to memorize, maybe come up with five, six, seven. But if I then I tell you like afterwards, I say, OK, they fall in these four categories. They are uh, fruits. They are state capitals, they are presidents, you know, and they are colors. 
how many more are you likely to remember? Because they're organized, right? So organization is another principle of memory. So, so far, we have things like repetition. We have first, we remember things that's last, we remember things that are familiar, we re remember things that are visual, we remember things that are organized. Because what we're teaching ourselves, what you're teaching each other is you're the memory expert, you remembered certain things, and there's a reason why. And that's what I love about this, this aha, it's like there's a reason why you forget things, and there's a reason why you remember. Some people remembered because they associated it to something else. And that's kind of interesting. So I would put association there. Association meaning that they took, like one person here, they took something and they connected it to something else. Now that's interesting, right? And so I think that a lot of learning is like, is association. And in fact, I would say all learning has to do with taking something on the outside, like something diff, something you don't know and connecting it to something you already know. Right. And so it's kind of like um, if I say dog, you say what? Cat. Right. If I say cat, you say what? Mouse. I say mouse. You say cheese. I say cheese. You say Swiss. I say Swiss. You say Alps. I say Alps. You say, you know, and it goes, goes on and on and on. That's how your memory works is through association. And just finally, I just want to kind of just wrap up this particular exercise. Um, some people say they remember Knight Rider. Um, some people don't know what Knight Rider is. I pulled that out because I know we have uh, the uh, that same generation. We're we're going to be in this part of the series um, talking to MacGyver, the guy who created the uh, creator of MacGyver, and that's kind of the same era. Um, Knight Rider was this. Uh, it wasn't the name of the car of the Trans Am. That was Kit. Um, Knight Rider was the character in the television series with the uh, black Trans Am. But Knight Rider was one, and some people remember that. And I would say that that principle was was because it was outstanding outstanding and I would list that because we tend to remember things that stand out right you don't remember what you did last you know necessarily last last week Tuesday right unless it was an out something outstanding happened right something that was unusual happened so we tend to remember things that are outstanding and unusual um, one other thing that um, was posted here that I wanted to bring out was some people remember diamond um, because it, Marianne, it glittered in my mind, right? And so some things like stand out because there's an emotion to it also, right? There's an emotion. So I would add as a principle to memory, I would add emotion. Because remember what we talked about earlier, emotion tied to information becomes knowledge. It becomes long-term memory. And so the feeling is, is it has to be there. So let, let's stop there. Obviously, we could go deeper, but we probably covered all 10 things and realized that there's a reason why we remembered some of them. We repeated it. It was first. It was last. We were familiar with it. We visualized it. It was organized. It was we associated it to something else. It was unusual or outstanding enough for us to be able to, to remember it. It had some kind of unconscious or conscious emotion to it. But those are the kind of things I'm talking about. And when I'm doing this exercise with you, I'm teaching you, again, that it's not a matter of luck. It's not a matter of magic. That there's real science, there's real reasons why certain things get uh, recalled and some things don't. And then obviously focus, right? If you're not paying attention, then hear it to begin with. Now, what I want to do now is I want to take these qualities, these principles of recall, and I want to put it into a technique to help you memorize this list now. So when we're done with this, you'll be able to memorize all 10 words. So what I'd like you to do is, if it's safe, I want you to take a deep breath, exhale, close your eyes if it's safe, like if you're not driving, operating heavy machinery, just breathe normal. And the only reason I ask you to close your eyes is it helps some people to focus better with their imagination. They don't have the external distractions. And what I'd like you to do is I want you to imagine, I want you to imagine a water bottle. And now as you're picturing it in your mind, I want you to notice what brand it is, the size of it, the colors that are on it. And even if you can't imagine it clearly, Pretend you are. Pretend it's right in front of you. All right. Now what I'd like you to do is I want you to imagine tied to this water bottle is a gigantic balloon, helium balloon. In fact, there are many balloons tied to it, many helium balloons tied to the, to the water bottle. 
so many so it's actually floating up in the air. And look at it in the air. And I want you to notice what color the balloon is. Say out loud what color your balloon is. Whatever color you just said, that's the color of your balloon. There's no right or wrong. All right? And when you see the balloon up there, I want you to notice out of nowhere, all these batteries come and they pop the balloon. They pop the balloon, all these batteries. And you're looking at the batteries. And what kind of batteries are they? Double A batteries, C batteries, D batteries. What brand of batteries? Just say it out loud. What brand of batteries? Good. It's like a brand new question. Energizer. No, it's Duracell. Good. And where are the batteries coming from? They're coming from this gigantic wooden barrel. A gigantic wooden barrel. Some guy's just throwing the batteries out of the barrel, popping the balloon. Look at the barrel full of batteries. Now, out from the barrel comes this snowboarder. It's a board. This big board, it could be a surfboard or a snowboarder, comes flying out of the barrel. So out of the barrel comes the board. And on the board, rolling on the board, is a diamond. Look at that diamond. And it's not like a half a carat or one carat or two carat diamond. It's a 94 carat diamond. <laughs> a 94 carat diamond rolling down the board. And it falls and it lands right in the Knight Rider car. This black Trans Am, Knight Rider. And you see the diamond inside the car. And the car goes off. Knight Rider drives away. And Knight Rider parks right behind an ox. An ox. So it parks right behind this big animal. An ox. Maybe a parallel parks between two of them. Ox. And you look at the ox and it's kind of strange because it has really bad breath. And you go there, and it's bothering you so much, you go and actually brush its teeth with toothpaste. Toothpaste. So you put yourself putting toothpaste all over the ox. Toothpaste all over the ox. Notice what brand it is. Notice, like, how it smells. <laughs> Use all your senses. Because that's what we're doing. We're taking the ordinary, making it extraordinary. Remember we talked to, to Michael Gell about, about sensory and synesthesia and using all the senses? We're developing that right now. Toothpaste all over the ox. And then when you're done with the toothpaste, you throw it, and the toothpaste goes all over this big superhero U, this big neon sign, this big superhero U neon sign, and it explodes. Toothpaste all over the sign. All right. Now, with your eyes closed, as long as it's safe and you're good to do that, I want you just to imagine doing what we just did again, starting with the water bottle all the way to the neon sign. With your eyes closed, breathe and just go. Just have fun with it. You're playing a game. You're activating your mind, your imagination, your memories. Remembering everything easily and effortlessly. All right, good. Now, let's walk through it again now. I want to walk through, and I want you to say out loud and pretend I'm there even. I'm doing this with you, all right? And just I'm doing it with you. And say out loud the first thing. Say it out loud. Good. Water bottle. After that, what happened to water bottle? Balloon. Good. After balloon, what did you have after balloon? Say it out loud. Battery, good. Where do the batteries come from? Barrel, good. What comes out of the barrel? The board. What was on the board rolling down? Diamond. You see the diamond, right? It lands right in the front seat of what? Knight Rider's car, Knight Rider. And then it parks right behind the what? Ox, good. And after ox, what did you do? Toothpaste. And then what did you throw the toothpaste? Sign. Excellent. Now what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to list down how many you're able to get if you're able to get more the second time than you did the uh, the first time. And basically what we're doing is that we took the things that you said helped you remember something and we just put it into a, like a little technique, very simple technique that exercises your mind, your imagination, really your right brain, right? Because the left brain is your words and your language and your sounds. But what most people aren't activating as much is their right brain. So even when we're talking about reading, and I want to talk a little bit about studying in a little bit, so I want you to think about a subject that really was difficult for you in school. But even when we're reading, it's a very left brain. It's words, linear, and sound, right? Our sub-vocalization, our self-talk. But what we want it to do is we don't just want you to hear the words in order. We want you to get the right brain experience of the words, imagine the words, 
feel the words, create the words and experience. And that's all right brain. Much like memory, where somebody gives you 10 words to memorize, you try to do left brain, logical, linear, with sound and repetition. That's left brain, right? But what about the emotion on the right brain? What about the creativity? What about the imagination? What about the systems organization of the right brain? Right. So all of quick learning that I teach, whether it's speed reading or memory or more, has everything to do with whole self learning, whole self learning, meaning it's not just, you know, whole brain learning where it's left and right. But it's also like, you know, our previous conversations with other people, conscious, unconscious. It's always using lifestyle in terms of your diet. Like we talked about, you know, doctor with um, with Tana Amen. It's also about using your multiple intelligences and thinking patterns like, you know, Michael Gallum and Leonardo da Vinci. It's also about accessing your three different brains like we talked about with Rudy, Rudy Tanzi and such. You know, it's all this stuff about thinking and doing. And so it's all combined, right? And there's never one like quick fix for anything you know i used to say just do as much as you can even when we're talking about be suave if you don't want to believe you know and say the name and visualize it great then just you know exercise just use the name and just you know end with the person's name or ask about it you know as long as you do part of it then you're going to get it's better than doing nothing and that's where most people are they're passive learners they expect information just to be pushed inside their brain as opposed to them creating the information Right. And that's the difference. You know, the, they say that and this is not a slight on, on teachers at all, because I get to work with a lot of educators. My mother is a, is a school teacher. My aunt is as well. But th there's a quote that's from Rip Van Winkle that said or somebody else has said that if Rip Van Winkle you know, woke up after a deep sleep, after, you know, d decades, the only thing he would recognize is the education system. And the challenge is, is the old when schools were started and, you know, and they would have. Like uh, the teachers chant something to the students, the, the students would have to chant it back and the teachers would chant it again and the students would chant it back. It was, that's why they call it rote learning. Rote is like rotary, like a wheel, you know, or like a wheel. That, that's what it actually means. Like if you're part of a rotary club, you know, the symbol is a wheel. The first half of the wheel is the teacher chanting. The second half is the students chanting. And that's what's turning the wheel and you just keep on going. And then after you do it 50 times, you got it. The challenge is in today's day and age, you don't have the time for that kind of repetition. You have to use instead of um, in terms of frequency or duration, you need intensity, intensity, get it done fast, you know, and get it done where you're going to remember it. And, uh, and that's what whole self-learning is really all about, that you learn at your very best in a way that's fun and fast. Now, let's, um, because I do want to get to, we covered names, we covered a list of words, and I hope you enjoyed that, that you're able to get more. And even if you weren't able to get all of them, um, but just recognize that success breeds success, and you can build on success. Where did I visualize? Where did I not associate? Where did I not organize? Where did I you know, not make it outstanding or unusual, make it bigger and, like, lots of balloons or lots of batteries where how did, how did it make me feel you know what i mean so that's what we're talking about after that though um what i want you to do now is list a subject um in school that really was difficult i want to talk about some of the the reading and stuff like that um but let's let's relate back to school the, what's what classes was just a lot of memorization classes that you had to be able to memorize stuff and remember and i want, I want to show you an example of how to apply this towards things you want to read or study, but I want to get a good example back in high school, something we could all relate to. So what kind of classes did you need to be able to memorize? Well, let's take science. What kind of science did you have a lot of memorization for? You know, a lot of like memorization. And I hope what you're going to do after you learn what I'm about to show you is you're going to show like a lot, a lot of people. All right. So science, science, chemistry, physics, chemistry. Chem all right. Um, let's, uh, OK, let's do this. Let's do chemistry. OK, Let, what do you have to memorize in chemistry? Let's say chemistry was something you need to be able to memorize. Right. What did you would you need to memorize in um, in the area of chemistry? It's been so long, right, since we've been back in, 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 in high school. But like think about the things that you would need to memorize. That's like solid, something that is kind of the basis of, of whatever it was. Elements like elements like, oh, what, what's the name of that? Um, what's the name of that chart? The table, yeah, okay, periodic table. Um, so let's say you need to be able to memorize like the chemical elements on the periodic table, all right? Now, I want you to notice, I'm gonna, I wanna go through and start memorizing some of this stuff, and I want you to know that how cool this is, because if we use this as an example, for 99% of you, um, 
the periodic table is probably doesn't really excite you. It's uh, probably pretty technical, you know, for you unless you're a scientist, and so it's difficult. And number three, it's probably not relevant at all to your life. No, okay, sorry. It's extremely relevant, <laughs> the chemical elements to your life, <laughs> for you being alive. But in terms of your day-to-day -day life, it's probably not very relevant, right? Um, in terms of like, no one goes to you and say, hey, what's the, what's what's the atomic you know number for this or the element for this or number 23? Um, so so notice, I'm going to help you memorize some of the elements on the periodic table. And if you could do it for this, something that's not relevant to your life, something that's technically difficult and something you have zero excitement for, that's probably very boring for you, then you could apply it towards the subjects that you really want to remember, that you have a background in, and that actually is relevant to your life. Okay. So the elements, just for time's sake, I'm not going to ask you because you're all on Google and you could all look it up and stuff. The let's let's do the first ten or twenty elements, right? It's hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon. Actually, let, let's stop there because we're already like kind of over time with the call. So what I want you to see now is this. Those are the first ten elements, right? And you just just trust me, those are really it. Some of you I could just be making up names. <laughs> <laughs> Magarelium. <laughs> um, so hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, uh, fluorine, and neon. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, that's ten, all right? So now here's the technique that I'm going to teach you. All right, we're going to do the same thing, and this time we're going to create a technique called chain linking. Remember when I talked about dog, you think of cat, you think of mouse, you think of cheese, you think of Swiss, you think of Alps, you think of skiing, you think of hot chocolate, whatever you think of, right? What we're going to do is the ultimate tip is TIP. TIP means turn into a picture. You turn into a picture. And because we tend to remember what's visual. And then when you have that visual, what you're going to do is t turn it to combine it with another of the principles, which is association. So you're going to take that picture and connect it to another picture. You're going to associate it. But here's the thing. Remember Knight Rider, you know, we have to make, you know, we used, we have to make it outstanding and unusual. In fact, what glues the two pictures together are what I call the vowels. The vowels. What are the vowels? A, E, I, O, U. A stands for action, E stands for emotion or exaggeration, I stands for illogical, O is going back to outstanding and unusual, right? So what glues one piece of information to another, because that's what we define as learning and memory, is that association. But what glues it is action, exaggeration, emotion, you make it illogical, you make it outstanding, you make it unusual. So it's glued there and that's a lifelong memory. All right. And these are the things that you told me help you to remember things. So what we're going to do is the first thing you do is turn into a picture. So if I want to remember hydrogen, right, what you're going to do is you're going to come up with a kind of like Pictionary. I don't know if you've ever played this game at parties called Pictionary. Basically, you get in two teams and somebody gives you like a card and you have to get your team to say what's on that card, like a movie or something. But you can't talk. You have to just draw. And so it's all in pictures. So if I needed you to remind you that the first element of the periodic table is hydrogen, what would remind you of hydrogen? All right. What would remind you of hydrogen? And so what I would say here is something like it was something that either you use for hydrogen, you know, something that hydrogen is used for. So you could picture that. Or if you don't know what it is, then you have to come up with a sound alike. Because in Pictionary, if you don't know what the word is, then you draw an ear, right? And it sounds like this, right? That's what we're doing sometimes with people's names. If you can't remember someone's name and you can't picture it, you come up with something that sounds like it. Because then if you can't remember it, how many people with names do this? Oh, does it start with a B? Does it start with a you know, C, D, E, F, G, all the way? And you get really nervous when you get to like W, right? Because there's no, there's not many letters after that. But yeah, sometimes a letter does remind you of the whole thing. So hydrogen, what could you use for hydrogen? All right, so let's actually use water. So just imagine a water bottle to remind you of hydrogen, right? H2O. So water. So imagine a water bottle, okay? So that's the first thing. Now you just have to take the second element and turn it into a picture also to help you remind you. And so the second element is helium. What could you picture for helium? Okay, um, okay. <laughs> All right, so why don't we use a balloon, a helium balloon? So now what you do is just glue it together, right? So imagine you just take the water bottle that represented 
hydrogen and take the balloon that represented helium and put them together. So what could you picture? Like maybe a water bottle and tied to it a whole bunch of balloons. All right. Just imagine that a water bottle tied to it a whole bunch of balloons. Great. The third element that you need to remember is lithium. Lithium. Now, you know, do you know what lithium is used for? Or what, what do you use for, for lithium? What's lithium used for? Let's picture batteries. Okay, lithium batteries. So imagine, yes, the, the water bottle's there, balloons go up, take the water up, and then just associate the batteries to the balloon. Like imagine like lots of batteries come and they pop the balloon out of nowhere. Maybe lots of batteries come and they just pop the balloon. Imagine that, all right? So batteries remind you of lithium. Very good. All right, so now you have the, um, all right, so you have your water bottle, the balloons carry it up, batteries come pop it. The next thing you have to remember is um, beryllium. What could you picture? What sounds like barrel ilium? What sounds like, what could you picture that sounds like it also? Barrel ilium. What could remind you of, you're not sure what it is, but, it, you know, the next element is barrel ilium. Okay, so you can picture a barrel, right? A barrel full of batteries popping the balloon that's holding the, uh, carrying up the, uh, the water bottle, right? And out of, um, you know, out of the, ba out of the barrel, you need to be able to picture the next thing, which is, uh, boron. You know, boron. What could remind you of boron? What sounds like boron? Like, it would remind you of maybe something like, um, like a board. Like a board maybe remind you of a boron. Like, you're not sure what the, the next element is. And someone says, oh, well, it kind of sounds like bored. You wouldn't go, oh, that's nitrogen, right? Or, oh, you made fluorine. You would say bored. Oh, boron, because you study this, and that's your study, right? So just imagine, like, out of the barrel comes a big board. And what would remind you of carbon, right? Carbon. What could you picture for carbon? Diamond. You had the, the water bottle, the balloon carrying it up, the hydrogen balloon, <laughs> the lithium batteries popping them, coming up out from the barrel ilium. Out comes the board or the boron, and rolling on it is the, the carbon diamond and the diamond falls into Knight Rider, which reminds you of nitrogen, and it parks behind the ox, which reminds you of oxygen, and you brush its teeth with fluoride toothpaste to remind you of the ninth element, and then you throw the toothpaste into a big neon sign to remind you the tenth element is neon. And you could just kind of go on and on and on. But I mean, so you're like, wow, that takes a little while. No, it takes a little while to explain, but to actually do it is really fast. And if you wanted to do it for the next 10 or the next 20 or the next 30 or the next 40 or the next 50, the chain linking method is a wonderful way a wonderful technique to be able to memorize things better with more effectiveness and just have fun with it also. What I, what I love about the quick learning or the superhero you journey, it's about taking the ordinary and making it extraordinary. Because by itself, the 10 elements or a phone number or a list of to-dos or formulas, they're inherently not too exciting, right? And so if interest really is the, the grandfather or the grandmother of learning, how do you make it interesting inside? You can't maybe do it on the outside, but inside your mind, you have a canvas, right? You have this movie theater of a, of a, of a brain that you could picture things and you can increase the sounds, you can increase the vibrance, you can increase the imagination, the colors, you could put yourself into it. And that's why even when I talk about speed reading, I remember when I first learned these skills and there was a, and you could use it to memorize things like, you know, a, a to-do list, these things like grocery list or anything like that or study list or even the things that's on these calls. But the, what this is all about, when I, when I was, for example, uh, learned the speed reading techniques a couple dozen, uh, you know, 20 years ago or whatever, I, I, there was a movie out that came out, and it was um, a John Grisham um, book um, with uh, Tom Cruise, and he played a lawyer for the mob, and it was called The Firm, right? And a bunch of friends wanted to go see it, and I was like, well, I didn't read the book yet. And have you ever been in that situation? Like, the book comes out, but you haven't read yet. I mean, the movie comes out, but you haven't read the book yet, and then you never get a chance to read the book because, you know, you have lots of books on your shelf you haven't read yet. You never get past the first chapter, and so you never get to watch the movie. So friends wanted to go say, say hey, let's go. go. I was like, oh, I didn't read the book. So I I, I grab the book and I run uh, to the car and we go to movie theater. We get to the theater and they say, hey, should we get you a ticket? I was like, no, I'm going to go. I'm going to stay here and just just read my book. And they're like, fine. You know, and then they go in and watch the movie. I, I start the book and uh, I finish the book. 
and I'm all excited about my new like found reading skills, right? My superpower. And uh, and then I finished the book, and then they come out later and after the movie, and they're like, I was like, how's the movie? And they're like, well, that was it, it was okay. They're like, how's the book? I was like, the book was awesome. I really enjoyed the book because it doesn't matter. They can't, and even if you see John Grisham, you know, in a, in the interviews, he's like, what they do to my movie, right? But nobody could do even you know George Lucas and Disney what they're going to do the next Star Wars number seven. <laughs> no one could do what you could do in your own mind. No one could do what you could do in your own mind. And once you taste that power, and I don't mean power over anybody else but yourself, you know, just like what uh, what we're talking to Tana Amen about, about the delicious food, nothing tastes, I don't care the junk food that's out there, nothing tastes as good as clear, energetic feels in your mind. I, I wouldn't change that for anything. And I've been on this path just to help people to you know, bring people in and say like, hey, get a glimpse of what you're capable of. And you're, you're gonna think, you're, you're gonna think, wow, why wasn't I taught this years ago? And who cares? You get to learn it now. And that's, that's the whole point. I'll give you one, one final example. I uh, see one of my students in Westchester, New York. We're, um, here, our superhero U headquarters. And, uh, our neighbors are the X-Men, for those of you who are comic book geeks. <laughs> and, um, I'm, run, I'm just going my neighborhood. I'm just, you know, I always do my, my health food store I do to go to the gym or whatever. And I see one of my students and, he, and he's like, hey, I, you know, I took your class. I'm like, yes, I remember. You know, how are you doing? He's like, oh, really interesting story. I, I always let people read whatever they want to read in our speed reading class because it's very practical. It doesn't take time. It's net, no extra time because one of the biggest time wasters that people have is reading and um, because they could spend three hours a day reading. And if I could at least double their reading speed, which is very realistic, and they save an extra 90 minutes a day or even 60 minutes a day, an hour a day over the course of 365 days is how many hours? It's 365 hours. How many 40-hour work weeks? If you've taken uh, our program with uh, with the human calculator, if you watch that video, it's nine 40-hour work weeks. That's two months of productivity just saving an hour a day on reading, on emails, on websites, on books, newspapers, everything. Because leaders are readers, right? John F. Kennedy, uh, Tony Robbins, you know, all of uh, Bill Gates. I got to meet him, and you know, that's his superpower. Anyway, I see one of our students. He's reading a book. He said, "I have an interesting story for you. I was reading a book in your class, and I." Re recently reread it after I graduated your program. It's like a, a five, six week program. And, I, and it was totally different. And I was like, what do you mean? And I was like, I was like, what book was it? I said, and it was uh, The Old Man and the Sea. I don't know if you read that, The Old Man and the Sea by uh, Hemingway, right? Who, um, Mariel Hemingway is actually one of our faculty talking about um, some, some health and mental health stuff and um, on Superhero You. But um, anyway, I was like, wow, the old man in the sea. I was like, how is it different the second time? You know, I didn't, I didn't realize that, you know, he updated the book. <laughs> I'm sure he didn't update the book, right? And, um, haha. And he's like, no, but the second time after your program, I felt like, not only did I read it three times faster, I felt like I was in the book, meaning, I was in the book. I could hear the ocean waves. I could feel the sand beneath my feet. The only thing I didn't like was the smell of the fish. And that's a true story. But that's the difference between left brain reading and whole self learning, whole brain reading if you will, because they didn't just hear it, they experienced it, and that's all your right brain, very kind of abundant and very passionate, obviously, about this, is activating that right side of your brain, because for most people, it's dormant. And then for most people, it's not encouraged in the society for most educational systems. It's how do you read and how's your math, right? That's the SATs, right? It's how's your verbal and mathematical skills. But what about musical? What about movement? You know, what about creativity? What about visual arts? What about all the other areas that make us more of a whole brain learner? And that's why I take the time with with going through these strategies for you and these visualization process for you. Because even if you're not going to use this strategy to get the result, use it to train your brain to use more of it. And so you could have that superhero mind. All right. Um, I want I want to thank you for being in this conversation with me. This has been a little bit different kind of call than we have with the interview series. And um, but I just I'm just very passionate about it. So I was, I was really glad to get my my time with you and have you fully present. Thank you so much for all your comments here. If you want in more information, we, we do not have a book. Actually, we're, I think we're the only speakers or experts in here that does not have a book just because it's just haven't had a time to put together a book yet. Um, but if you want to find out more information about our programs, then like all the other speaker's go to superherou.com forward slash bookstore 
and we have a great deal for people that want to take our online speed reading memory programs. But I don't want to pitch on here, and obviously we make that big donation to the Pencils of Promise. But I just want to give you tools because part of the superhero journey is learning, and if you want to be able to go deeper with something, we want to make those available for you. So I appreciate you so much for being on this call. Um, our team sends you so much, so much love because I feel like that we're kindred spirits. That if you're listening to me even late at night now as you are listening or even on the replay and you got to the end, then you're a special person. That there is probably a reason why we connected in the first place. I don't want to get completely metaphysical here, but I do believe that if you're listening to this here right now, then there's probably a reason and it's probably not by accident. And that I hope that this information uh, this evening and you know, on this call and in this series is serving you to the utmost. And if I could be of any support in helping you to activate more of those powers so you could do more good at your work, more good with your family and your friends and to the world, then it would be my honor to be able to do that. So and thank you so, so very much for tuning in. Share it with your friends. Teach them along with you. Join us on Facebook for the conversations that are to come. And remember to be suave. <laughs> Use your chain linking. Remember your mom. And wish your days be full. Lots of love. Lots of laughter. Lots of life. Lots of light. And, of course, always lots of learning. Thank you so, 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 so much. <laughs>